the birth of Sayyidina Muhammad and the birth of the Muhammadan light and the birth of creation. On awal khalqillah, the first thing that Allah created and alhamdulillah from Ayat al Kareem, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Raheem, Ta'aseem, Tilka Ayat al Qur'an wal Kitab al Mubeen. And Allah swearing by this reality and that these are the signs of Khudi Qur'an, this fire, this reality that the granting us to enter and the beatific and clear book of Allah that this Qur'an is written upon the soul and the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah and the reality of that fire, that essence of bringing that light into existence Allah granting those with that understanding and that way of Shams al Arifin moving towards this oceans of light and the beatific reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and the third month opens the reality of this Divinely Presence, this Divinely Fire, this source of light in which the purified light that Allah to dress us from the immensity of its purity and the immensity of its secret, Nurul Anwar wa Sirat al Asrar that every, every light has a secret and every secret has a light means the source of all knowledges, the source of all realities that Allah inshaAllah enter and allow us to enter into that reality, to be dressed by that reality then becomes the teachings of the kingdom of Sayyidina Sulaiman salam and gives for us an understanding that in this cave, this light, this presence, this is the presence of the Divinely Kingdom. And the Sultanat and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that is based on immense humility. If a representative exhibits an amazing power, an amazing ability, an amazing reality that God has given to them, imagine the one whom is the true custodian of that reality, that is the, the amazing nature and that's why the correct understanding of… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Quran that they should know that Prophet is above all the Prophets, all the Prophets of Allah they take from the Risalat of Sayyidina Muhammad that the crown of creation and the one who represents Allah the Khalifa of Allah and all prophecy exists within the prophecy of Sayyidina Muhammad if the understanding is not clear, you can imagine then every qissa, every reality is lost. When the clarity that there is nothing but Allah, La ilaha illallah because they don't understand the, the usul, the law and that other than La ilaha illallah is only Muhammadun Rasulullah is the kalima, everything has to abide by the kalima. So means that it teaches us that there is no God, no divinity but Allah And the direct connection between 
la ilaha illallah alif lam lam he touching mim and it touches and from that he it shoots out the reality. So from Allah's he of hidayat it touches and shoots out Muhammadun Rasulullah and that he has a wow above it because this is the reality of Allah's who. When Allah described Qul Hu, Qul Hu, and that who from Allah which can never be seen is dressing the huwa, is dressing him, the one whom Allah is speaking to. Qul Hu is the surah of sincerity and immense purity. The one whom can never be seen is speaking to somebody. One speaking, one spoken to. When Allah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qul Hu, Qul Hu, Allahu Ahad means that reality of that who touching the mim and coming now Muhammadun Rasulullah Everything now exists in creation in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah So every Prophet is created from what light? Muhammadun Rasulullah They can't have risalat above the risalat of the one who owns their light, they come from him and they can only take a, a position minor to the primary because the one whom is the source file everyone else is just of a lesser nature taking from that reality. Means the source of all of this is Muhammadun Rasulullah all the Prophets are taking from that ocean, they can't go above that ocean. So means their prophecy only exists because of the prophecy and the prophetic position and nature of Muhammadun Rasulullah These ulama when they teach that, the students understand that, then they understand the great example of all the qasas of the Prophets. That Allah giving to us then these, these stories for us to understand who is Muhammadun Rasulullah So when we come to the stories and the realities of Sayyidina Sulaiman one whom Allah gave a mulk and authority and a kingdom to which he gave no other man and that was a symbol in the humility of Prophet that didn't want to exhibit on this earth this type of authority, did not want to show that upon the earth. But the fact that it exists in a story of prophecy then it's a sign for those who believe that the great humility of Prophet no doubt could hear and communicate with all the jinn, all the ifrit, all the angels had command and control over all animals, all creatures, inanimate and animate objects, all their praise, all their realities is all under that dominion and kingdom and the dome of Sayyidina Muhammad So that when we read about Sayyidina Sulaiman because now Allah defining for us that those whom entered into this fire are blessed. Those whom are around that fire are blessed. How the blessing? Listen to the realities of Sayyidina Sulaiman That how the, the kingdom and those whom serve the kingdom don't deem them to be empty. Because people have eyes and they don't see, they have ears and they don't hear. And one whom understands and grasps this he understands what's happening upon this earth, right? So the whole of the satanic world is after and imitating the powers and the authority of Sayyidina Sulaiman the illuminated 
with their eyes and their skirts and their symbols and their gestures, all shaitan plays with them to make them feel that their deeds are good and that they reached an authority and that they too want from the seen and the unseen world when they use the symbols of black and white and all their symbolisms is they say that they've mastered the earth of the seen and the unseen beings but they've only mastered the shayateen. They have nothing to do with the heavens and they have sold themselves for a small price. And the price of what they sold is what shaitan plays with them and plays with the ifrit to give them and to fool them. So all this earth is about that reality. When we come into this month this is an immense awakening of what's happening with the satanic kingdom. They want that power. They want to imitate that power and they have been fooled and Allah describes how shaitan came to them and made all their mischievous things appear good to them. They feel satisfied, they receive something of a material gain, a worldly gain and they feel that they achieved from that authority and that power. But in reality they sold their souls for a small price. And its true reality is in the hand and dominion of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhanal ladhi bi yadihi mulk wa tabarak alladhi bi yadihi mulk. Allah throughout Qur'an is, is reaffirming and confirming, glory be to the hand who has my dominion and my kingdom and his kulli shay and that his hand is his authority is all encompassing. And that his authority and his dominion over the world of lights is all encompassing. So, it means the true power and the true authority of the realities of Sayyidina Sulaiman for the mulk and the manifest worlds, these are all under the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad. That's why when they say the Najj and they say, Oh, this is the star of David, David is a prophet under the Prophet of Sayyidina Muhammad. Sayyidina Sulaiman is a prophet under the prophecy of Sayyidina Muhammad So they're under the khirqah of Prophet Anything that they brought for their people is owned and its ownership is under Muhammadun Rasulullah So when they see that we put the star they say, oh this is the star of David, no. Its owner is the star of Sayyidina Muhammad What he gave them of a knowledge was not the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah If they thought that star was powerful under Sayyidina Sulaiman they haven't the slightest understanding that when it's truly opened under the authority of La ilaha illallah then goes Muhammad Rasul Allah that the authority over the soul and its reality is La ilaha illallah. Who has authority under that? Who can open the reality of La ilaha illallah? Because the upward star, upward triangle has to do with your upward reality of your soul which is under La ilaha illallah. There's no one that has the authority over the soul except for Muhammadun Rasul Allah. So means the one whom has authority over the downward which is then the physical realm. The upward is the world of the souls and lights, the down is the world of the form. And the only one who can discipline the form is then Muhammad Rasul Allah that he brings to them the reality of Allah to tame their wildness. And then we describe the whole realities of Najj and the star. That is the reality of taming the star, the soul and bringing out, taming the body and bringing out the reality of the soul. Means all of these authorities, all of these realities, these are under the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad and the one who sits upon the throne 
is the one who wears the crown of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So this is an immense reality of Prophet and this gives to the believers the understanding that whatever we read about Sayyidina Sulaiman that this is the reality and its reflection is Muhammadun Rasulullah Sakhallakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi ard wa jami' that we have subjected to you that you are, you are the king and the authority of all the heavens and the earth, we have made them subject to you. And whatever is between them means a catch all in the contract that whatever is in the earth above the heavens and the earth and anything between them. We have made them subject to your authority, Ya Sayyidi, Ya Rasul Kareem, Ya Habib al Azim. That Allah has throughout Qur'an many proclamations of authority, that these are all under your authority, these are all under your kingdom and your domain. So then this Surah of 27 gives us the immensity of the kingdom of God and its authority and how much has control over the world, how much it has control over all the creatures and all the objects living and not living, animate and inanimate, all of them have an energy that bring them into existence. That energy is under the authority of Muhammadun Rasulullah From where? La ilaha illallah. So people again with incomplete functionality, they keep saying everything's from Allah, uh, that's a given. But what we're teaching is the key to La ilaha illallah is Muhammadun Rasulullah everything given to Allah. But it's not given from Allah to you. So the tariqahs come to teach who's the owner of these realities, these powers, these authorities, these protections. That if you want to reach the reality <coughs> and the protection of La ilaha illallah, you better be using the key of Muhammad Rasulullah because they've never come to you without that. And if you ever think you are receiving, you're receiving from shaitan and his illusions and delusions. That's what was said in last days, black and white will be very clear. The absence of grey is now appearing, is leaving. The grey zone is now vanishing where it will become much much clearer that who's black and who's white. What you're going towards reality or you're going towards the Hizb shaitan because the authority has to be very clear that everything in these oceans of realities is under the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad the mulk of Sayyidina Sulaiman was in a, a big isharat and guidance into that reality. So all the qasas and stories when we recite and read from Surah 27, Surah Al-Nam about the ant and the realities of what Allah has given to Sayyidina Sulaiman it was a big sign in the authority that was given to Prophet and that are under the dominion of awliyaullah. That all of this is an understanding that Prophet clarified that my real ulama, the arwarith al-anbiya from Bani Israel, that warith al-Muhammadiyyah, that my ulama whom are internal and external ulama, that they represent my light and my reality. They are the inheritors of the Prophets of Bani Israel. So we are now on a Prophet of Bani Israel And that's what Prophet was alluding to, that don't think they're empty, they're carrying from My realities. And they carry from the reality of the, of the station of prophecies of Bani Israel so it means that they inherit the understanding and the realities under the kingdom of Sayyidina Sulaiman That their taweezes, they are energized and powered. So when you read Surah Sulaiman that 
when Allah wants to give a kingdom to His servant, He has to give guards for the kingdom. Otherwise what's the purpose of having a heavenly kingdom? When we're telling people the kingdom on this earth, its true king is Muhammadun Rasulullah Well how could you follow a king if there's no guardian and power and authority? So then Allah began to describe that they had the marshaled armies of the jinn, of malaika, of all creatures, all of them lined up. Means that this earth, this reality, same. That for Allah to establish that kingdom upon earth, that there are many spiritual beings that are there for protection, to protect the kingdom and those whom are a part of the kingdom. And that's the that's an immense reality while reading this surah. Notice the storytelling. Oh wow, this is amazing how this happened. How does that happen? This is how this world is governed right now. That there are many from that kingdom that their allegiance to Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result these are the ta'weezes, these are the knowledges, these are all the realities that are put onto this earth as a protection. From these realities they have creatures under their dominion, they have uh, the, the ability from many different realities. If you think the birds were working for Sayyidina Sulaiman what do you think of Allah's creatures working for Sayyidina Muhammad Is there a creature that through their eyes they can't see and through their ears they can't hear? And that the creatures in the skies and creatures on the ground? That they're not working for Prophet and they're not ever vigilant of Allah's servants. People read Qur'an if it's an old storybook, astaghfirullah. But it's alive and it's very much for now. When you walk know that all those creatures they can see you, they can hear you, they hear your conversation. And if Prophet is asking of them anything, they will report to Prophet and those whom he gave an authority, they report to them. Mm. That's why then when you read Sayyidina Sulaiman he's, he's getting commands from the birds, so he's very angry. Imagine the immensity of his kingdom and he's angry why one bird didn't show up in, in the row. So where's the whoopee bird, hoot hoot? Out of all the birds he notices one bird to draw our attention that don't think this is the story of old but these are creations of Allah If they are in service to the heaven, the kingdom then they are ever vigilant. That they come, they're around. They watch the servants, they're guardians of the servants, many whom see through them, hear through them. All of these realities Allah makes us to be hyper alert. Don't be heedless people reading Qur'an thinking, oh well, this is a story from old, then you, you lost that barakah and that blessing. But how this must be alive right now? So where we go to the, the story of the Nam. <clears throat> Which verse is the Nam say? Let me get to there, the ant. Eighteen, please. Which ver- what verse? Eighteen. I can't hear you. One eight, 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 eight. What number? Eighteen. Let's recite. Inshallah. 
Verse 18 then. <laughs> يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون صدق الله العلي العظيم نبلغ الرسول الكريم حبيب العظيم one example of these realities that opens is when the armies of Sayyidina Sulaiman are beginning to set out for their marching. As they gathered the armies and the soldiers of the jinn, the men, the birds and all the creatures and marching in rows. And Allah is drawing our attention, Imagine the Creator of all created universes in His Holy Qur'an is stopping to give an example. If he's giving example, there must be an immense, immense reality in everything that Allah is saying. Otherwise may, why mention it? And he's giving to us that they were marching until they came upon a valley of ants. And the ants, the ants said, the ants said, Oh enter into your dwellings that you will not be crushed by the armies of Sayyidina Sulaiman while they perceive not. Means that Sayyidina Sulaiman one, he's marching with all the sounds of his marching, he stopped his entire army to hear an ant. What, what type of power is that? What type of yaqeen is that? And then Mawlana Shaykh would describe that awliyaullah, if Allah opened for them the necessary hearing, they can hear the ant walking on a stone miles away. And Allah is giving an example because people want to say, oh where do you get these things from Shaykh? Well, these are ancient tafsirs of Holy Qur'an from Sayyidina ibn Abbas and many, many tafsirs of the, the companions and the awliyaullah. And the gift is understanding that stop when you read Qur'an and listen to the teachings of awliyaullah and that Allah is drawing our attention that the, the leader of their ants, one Sayyidina Sulaiman is hearing them and what he's hearing is the dialogue of the leader of the ants telling his ants, kingdom enter into your homes unless you be crushed by the armies of Sayyidina Sulaiman. And he by mistake would have done that, not that he's intentionally going to crush your homes but enter back into your homes. And Sayyidina Sulaiman he smiled and he was amused at her speech and he said, Oh my Lord enable me to be grateful for your favours and continues on. Why Mawlana Shaykh would always stop at this section to remind us. One, that do you think that the servants of Allah that can't hear creatures speaking? And Allah is giving very clear proof that when the servants are blessed by Allah they have command over this earth, they have the ability to hear creatures and their form of communication. One, so that we're aware that there are people whom Allah has given a gift to. And then two, the compassion for creatures. The people take big creatures, do lab tests on them and they think, oh they don't feel pain, they don't feel pain. Allah's telling us that the ant and why an ant? Because in Arabic the ant is commonly referred to like an atom. The smallest that you can give an example for 
they didn't have a word for atom so they would say ant. So it's like the f smallest form of measurement that Allah is saying, what are you talking about my creatures don't have feelings? The ant is showing us he has feelings and they're scared and he has a love for his community and he's telling them, go into your homes. They communicate. So Allah's creation all have feelings, all have, have community and love and compassion. They have a compassion for each other, their survival, their existence. Then Allah draws to our attention from these people who want to enter cave and want to enter the realities of power, realities of, of wisdom that, how come you can't communicate like the ant? Because we talked about the other day the scientists are teaching us, if you want to be a particle and every discussion you want to enter into is going to be about a fight and you yell and you scream and you keep your particle existence, you lost what God gave to you. But if you want to train with us on how to bring your wave reality, how to bring your energy, how to bring your true form of communication, then Allah is bringing our attention that, how come you can't even do what my aunt can do and you think you're so great? You walk so tall, you think you have a big head, you have lots of lab experiments. You can't communicate with each other, you have to still use a phone. So what communication did an ant have? How big and how wide was the kingdom that she was communicating to and she had no mobile phone. She merely put out a signal that went to all the ants and they all entered into their homes. And that's what we say every year on an ant, which side is the head? Because they're, they look like they're both the same, doesn't even have like a visible, which side of this ant is a head? So tiny, so small. And we that have such a profound size head can't communicate to anyone, can't communicate to the person even in front of you, more or less uh, you know. 10 miles away, 5 miles away in comparison to the size of an ant talking to her community probably like 10-20 miles away would be for us based on our size. With no phone just send a signal from your heart and turn to your homes. Who would receive that signal and go in? This is a dalil for the people who say, there's no shaykh and there's no shaykh who can reach you. It's only Allah and then they come up with the dajjal phrase again from the fire that we talked last night if people are contemplating. When they reiterate what the antichrist teaching is, they're already affected by the sight of paradise and they see it as a fire. And they keep quoting to us the fire that this is paradise, so they're already mixed up. Anytime we teach about paradise they keep quoting to us that this is a fire. And we read the same book but they have eyes that they don't see and ears that they don't hear. Don't they see the evidence and the proof? If the ant can teach her students without a phone that enter into your homes and that seek your safety and that the ant is able to communicate with its family and its community. You don't think Allah gave that to walakal karamna bani Adam, to the to creation that He loves and He says, I've honored the creation of Adam and Eve. And they come back and say, This shirk, this is partnership. What are you people talking about? Allah's giving an example of an ant can communicate with her community and warn them of danger. And you don't think if you hyper tune yourself. Open up your wave reality, open up your energy and sink and attune yourself with these shaykhs. These shaykhs whom their wave reality, their light reality is so powerful that you can't receive a signal of safety, of guidance and assurance and all within the dominion and acceptance of Allah because Allah is giving us the example. That all my creatures have immense power, compassion, don't you go around squishing them thinking that nobody cares for them. 
They have a family and a community, they have a form of communication and they have a praise but you don't have ears to hear it and the only one who hears it are the people of tafakkur. Allah described, Yusabihu wa bihamdi, for everything praises me but you haven't the ears to hear it except the men of contemplation. Men and women, the people of contemplation whom their hearts are alive, their wave is alive, they, their vibration and the, the, the vibration of their existence is alive and Allah drawing our attention, then be like them. So it's then not the size of your head, actually the size of your head is making the biggest problem, right? The shaitans who come their heads are very big as to give us an example, oh boy they're like really big into their head. This is why you see these big the shaitans with big heads, this actually has to go the opposite. Be like the ant in which you have no head at all. Lose your head, that's why the tariqahs the first zikr is la ilaha to the right side, illallah into the heart because you see me on the opposite direction but illallah is to our emblem, nothing but Allah, nothing divinity but Allah. So every zikr and every tariqah starts with la, why? is that the big head you have, reduce it. If you can reduce the capacity of your head to keep thinking and thinking and thinking, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, you won't do it. If you can master your head to be, La ilaha illallah, illallah, then when Allah pushes it'll happen and you'll achieve it. And we described before in the love of the birds. They have what they call a pea brain. The bird has a huge heart, is a big chest and a little tiny brain. And because it has a big chest and big heart and big love it flies. And it never thinks that when it's flying, oh, oh my gosh I'm going to fall from here. If Allah gave it a bigger head, as soon as it would fly it would think, oh my I'm going to fall and then come back down. So our whole life and the reality of this cave is now teaching us in this kingdom there are many powers, there are many abilities, think from the world of light. These creatures are all communicating and what you inherit is from the Sulaiman power that the angels will be under your command, the jinn will be under your command, the shayateen will be frightened of your command that the creatures that will be under your command because they are subservient to the light. One whom has authority in the world of light has authority over the whole kingdom of this earth. And that's what the reality of Sayyidina Sulaiman is teaching. And as a result build your power at least more powerful than the ant which they are very communal means they have a strong allegiance to each other, they uphold each other, they have a strong faith, they can live, they can lift a hundred times their weight. When you see a little ant carrying away an entire bee, it's a hundred times his weight he can carry because it doesn't occur to him that he's small. He thinks he's as huge and powerful as anything else because he has a tremendous himmah. And then all of these creatures are teaching for us and our final note on the reality of the ants and the reality of Allah's creatures was when we talked about last night when Sayyidina Ibrahim continuously was combating against the idol worshippers they built a fire. And they built a fire in which to burn Sayyidina Ibrahim and finally get rid of his continuous testing on them. And that fire they said was so huge that days away you could see the size of the flame. And they built this and they tried to catapult Sayyidina Ibrahim into this flame, they couldn't until Allah gave permission for that catapult to be released 
And as he went into the flame, Allah made it to be, قُلْ يَا نَحْرُ كُنِ بَارْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَى Ibrahim. That as he's departing from the catapult, Allah commanded the fire to be cool and peaceful because now the Messenger of Allah is entering into that domain. And as he entered into that flame, then alhamdulillah he was enjoying, people were looking from that fire and he's, Sayyidina Sulaiman is, Sayyidina Ibrahim is inside the flame with no effect, like a paradise inside that reality for him. But on the outside the ant and there was a little tiny ant was so horrified by the fact that they were going to burn the Prophet of Allah that when he saw that flame he set out to get water and with a little drop of water he was running back to the immensity of this fire. And the fire was so great it was not approachable and he said by the time he brought his little drop and threw it towards the fire it already had dried before entering into that flame. And he kept going back and forth throwing this water, throwing this water until one of Allah's servants asked the ant, can you see the size of this fire? And this water that you bring is not going to put this fire out. And the ant replied to the servant of Allah that's not my duty to put it out. But it's my duty that when I saw this fire and saw this difficulty, I had to have it written for me that I tried to change it, to do something positive for it, not just sit by and watch it to burn. Then it would be written that I saw the fire and I allowed it to just burn. He was teaching a servant of Allah that it's not a matter of you changing things and so I can't change it therefore I won't be involved in it, no. But that we saw the fire of this dunya and we wanted it to be written by Allah that we did something of goodness, means a khidmat. This is our life is a khidmat. You're not going to solve world hunger. But if you feed that one person you solved it for them for that day. Means if you can do a good deed just for somebody it's enough for that person that is thankful to you for the deed that you did. Our life is about seeing these difficulties and resolving them one at a time, one person at a time, one difficulty at a time. We pray that Allah inspire us all to take a drop and to throw it towards these flames. That to be written for us that we did good when we saw all this badness and that we're trying to improve ourselves in this cave and in these oceans of reality. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa Wa siri al-Surat al-Fatiha Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.